Alright guys, it is a gray, gloomy, depressing day. Here in the end times, I guess we're in paradise somewhere in upstate New York. We're hanging out at Sister Sandy's house for a while on this gloomy day in the end times. That would be Wednesday, July 25th, 2018, I believe, and I am... Uh, Good God, uh, your old depressed collapsitarian thought he did not have the energy to do a uh, to do a doomsday roundup rant, but then I simply opened up my email from my Alert Tribes members and the mainstream media, and I will have one, two, or even three doomer roundup rants. Good God Almighty, and we're going to start off over here from Counterpunch, uh, where my old buddy Robert Hunziker, what is on uh, Robert Hunziker's mind today in Counterpunch, this is not the mainstream media, I assure you, uh, talking about how methane death trap threatens democracy. Well, as Robert knows, the methane death trap threatens a hell of a lot more than democracy. That is the least that the methane death trap threatens. And there are many more threats to democracy other than methane, starting with the biggest threat to democracy, Donald Trump. So, uh, but anyway, uh, good Lord. And Robert, once again, just spelling it all out. Uh, Anyway, we're just going to read the three opening paragraphs. A methane death trap, continuing Arctic Ocean eruption of ever-increasing levels of methane, brings forth speculation of a black swan event. And that is not a BS event, meaning society is called flat-footed oblivious to impending danger until it is way too late. Along those lines, The Economist newspaper recently highlighted the methane issue for its mainstream, mainstream readership. The methane mystery scientists struggle to explain a worrying rise in atmospheric methane from The Economist in April. Uh, anyway, uh, I think I went over this story with Robert in our interview. You might want to plug in Robert Hunziker. Anyway, skipping ahead from that, from quoting the economist, <coughs> climate scientists have long cited methane bubbles rising to the surface in the Arctic for well over a decade now, especially along the East Siberian Arctic Shelf. Problem, methane eruptions are gradually turning into virtual monsters, getting bigger and wider, up to a half mile across of rippling bubbles, and potentially more dangerous and destructive, expanding more and more in anticipation of a gigantic methane burp. Maybe 50 gigatons suddenly versus only 5 gigatons now in the atmosphere, followed by a massive, global, self-reinforcing planetary heat stroke. Anyway, and Robert goes on from there. Uh, good Lord. But uh, I'm assuming that story is as good for the U.S. as any, any other country. So we're going to start our, our Doomer Roundup of uh, this collapsing planet in our own shithole country, including right here in New York State as major flooding set to hit East Coast as West endures scorching temperatures. Uh, there you go. So excessive rain <coughs> and major flooding are expected to hit central Pennsylvania today, 
potentially sparking evacuations, flash flood watches and warnings stretching from South Carolina to New York State today and a flood advisory was even issued for New York City. Good God, leading the pack, we have almost 14 inches of rain in Dunkirk, Maryland, over 10 inches of rain in Pennsylvania. Good God, and then uh, while we're sitting here dealing with all of this shit, what are some of the, uh, some of the temperatures in the western realms we got 119 in palm springs today 115 in phoenix 113 in las vegas 107 in sacramento 100 in burbank 103 in medford oregon and a cool 96 in portland oregon today Yep, 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 which might have something to do with this next headline. U.S. West power prices soar to all-time highs again in heat wave. Power prices for Wednesday in some U.S. Western markets rose to all-time highs for a second day in a row as consumers kept their air conditioners cranked up to escape a brutal heat wave, the California uh, operator of the state's power grid urged customers to conserve energy to the, reduce the risk of rotating power outages and other emergency measure, measures. Yep, resulting from lower electricity imports, tight gas supplies in Southern California and high wildfire risk. Yes, get ready for uh, for rolling power outages in California and wildfires have become one of the grid's big biggest worries as at least one fire is threatening a huge power line which would have pushed the grid into an emergency line to it to emergency if the line gets downed in a fire so anybody thinking that uh california is going to simply switch to uh renewable energy to escape those uh, pesky outages. Wow, <coughs> here we have it. All I'm getting, I guess, is since my uh, computer is jammed, wow, renewables won't keep California cool during heat waves. California policymakers are infatuated with renewable energy and electric vehicles, but the record-breaking heat wave that hit the state earlier this month, which left more than 30,000 customers in LA without electricity for several hours, is exposing the dangers, the dangers of that infatuation yes uh, then as I say my computer has eaten the rest of that story for anyone who still thinking their little solar panels or whatever are gonna save their asses from uh, from the wet bulb temperature pull your head out of your ass all right I did get a chuckle uh, out of this one, Exxon Mobil Corporation is the latest oil company to leave the conservative anti-climate lobbying group, uh, ALEC. Uh, the Koch brothers backed anti-climate change American Legislative Exchange Council 
and its little uh, its little evil spawn the Heartland found the Heartland Institute which is known for funding research that casts doubt on human cause climate change so uh, all of these oil companies not wanting to be embarrassed any further uh, by being joining by, by looking like they are funded by the Koch brothers Ugh, Jesus anyway what is our climate changing denier in chief up to today Wow US to stop taking payments from drillers and miners for damaging public land. Okay. The Trump administration on Tuesday said it would no longer require oil drillers, miners, and other industries to compensate Americans for damage they cause to public lands under their permitted projects in a bid to speed up development on federal lands. The move is the latest effort by the Trump administration to help businesses by rolling back environmental protections. Yes. Uh, anyway, uh, no shit, Sherlock. I guess what Donald Trump is doing is, is he's simply just going through every single, every single environmental protection law in the United States of America. Uh... And, and just simply killing it. So now uh, th these goddamn planet eaters can just completely uh, go into full scale rape and pillage of our public lands and, and not pay one penny uh, of damage. They can go right on about their business, which is to absolutely fucking destroy the planet. And, uh, yes, anybody wonders why Hambone Little Tail thinks Donald Trump is the biggest threat to this country and to this planet. So, I, I must admit somewhat sheepishly that I at, at first misunderstood this headline. Okay, if you were to read this headline, what would you think? <clears throat> U.S. agencies win fight over Yellowstone Dam and endangered fish. Okay, I, I actually, uh, I actually, I, I'm embarrassed to admit this, guys. When I read this, that U.S. agencies win fight over dam, uh, I, I, I thought this meant um, miraculously that some sort of U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service or National Park Service or some U.S. environmental agency had won the fight against some new planet-eating dam on the Yellowstone River fucking these fish. Who the hell, if, if you're thinking that, pull your head out of your ass. Uh, what? is going on is that I don't even know who the U.S. agency is. Uh, a federal judge rejected claims, rejected claims that an irrigation dam in Montana would doom a primitive endangered fish, the pallid sturgeon, prompting U.S. officials to say yesterday that a contract for the new dam will be awarded by the end of the year. Judge Brian Morris ruled that environmental groups failed to prove there were 
practical alternatives to the Yellowstone River Dam that will serve about 400 farmers in western North Dakota and eastern Montana. So uh, if it's a choice between sending the pallid sturgeon into oblivion or, or sending welfare to these 400 uh, farmers, and we're not talking about some uh, Norman Rockwell farm here, guess who wins? I have no fucking clue to this minute who the U.S. agencies are. It never mentions uh, the U.S. agencies that won the fight. Never mentioned in the story. It's just once again, these fish lose the fight. Oh shit, Sherlock. Okay. Uh, all right, as long as I'm uh, in the U.S., and then we're going to head over to, uh, well, these three stories. I'm going to save them. And, okay, we're going to stay uh, on this side of the planet and in the Western Hemisphere. Let's go over down to the shithole country of El Salvador. El, El Salvador declares emergency to ensure its food supply in severe drought. El Salvador on Tuesday began taking emergency measures in a drought that has plagued the country for a month and cost tens of thousands of farmers their corn crops. Uh, the Civil Protection Agency said the east of the Central American country has now gone 33 days without rain and temperatures have hit a record 107 degrees Fahrenheit, otherwise known as 41 Celsius, leaving many families without water. The government has declared a red alert in Salvador, in El Salvador, and seeking it, meaning it will seek to use public funds to ensure food supplies. Good Lord. Uh, and it's unclear at this point how badly coffee and cattle have been uh, affected from El Salvador to the shithole country of Venezuela. IMF says Venezuela to see one million percent inflation by year's end. Amid the financial and humanitarian crisis in Venezuela, the shithole country is expected to see hyperinflation reach epic proportions, a million percent per year by the end of 2018, the International Monetary Fund said Monday, and the nation's economic collapse will increasingly spill over into neighboring countries. Do you think so? Uh, so this will make the situation in Venezuela similar to Germany in 1923 or Zimbabwe uh, a few years ago. Uh, Venezuela's economy is expected to contra contract by 18% this year. That would mean the country that is seeing waves of citizens fleeing the crisis while those left, left suffer increasingly from illness, lack of medicines, and weight loss from lack of food. One of the few times that has happened in the last half century or more. Anybody uh, wanting to understand what the hell 
uh, the the collapse uh, of this planet is looking like. There you go, Venezuela and El, and El Salvador. And looking at my time, well, let's see, I've just got two out of the shithole continent of Africa, so I'm going to lump them in here. Uh, we have some very bad news coming out of the Congo. God damn it. God damn it. Chaotic Congo basks in rare success after quashing Ebola virus. Ah, shit. Well, the latest Ebola outbreak in the Congo apparently has been contained again. But don't worry. Don't worry. Ebola will be back. So this is just a temporary setback in the Doomosphere. Anyway, I'm sorry to give you such bad news. But, uh... We're going to go over there to the shithole country of Rwanda, where both the Chinese and the Indian Prime Ministers are hanging out this week. Alright. In Rwanda, in Rwanda, agricultural reforms boost food security and slash Poverty. Come on now, that ain't even bullshit. That's horseshit. Yes, those good old agricultural reforms as they continue to reform what's left of the native uh, forest and grasslands into more farms so they can grow more food for China and India while their own population goes about bush meeting. Anyway, we're just going to jump back to our own shithole country for uh, these last three that I had uh, lined up. Take a wild guess. The top ranked cruise destination of 2018. Where do you think the number one cruise destination of the year is if you picked Alaska's Glacier Bay, uh, give yourself a gold star thanks to its dramatic glacier viewing, yeah, as, as the glaciers tumble into the sea. And so I guess the cruise ships are, are dodging the icebergs in Glacier Bay. Oh, God. Thanks to its dramatic glacier and wildlife viewing, Glacier Bay, a world biosphere reserve and UNESCO World Heritage Site, emerged the most popular cruise destination of 2018 as the clueless fucking morons race up to Alaska to see the glaciers while they still can better make your reservation quick if you want to view glaciers or wildlife. But if uh, cruise ships are too, are too uh, low rent for you, just wait. It's almost here. It's almost here. I would say remember the Hindenburg. Remember the Hindenburg as you read this story. Take a look at the luxury airship that will feature glass bottom floors and private cabins. Guest of a newly imagined futuristic aircraft will be privy to dizzying views of a collapsing planet beneath their very feet via glass bottom floors. There you go. Uh, all right, when is this supposed to happen? It does not say. Uh, I guess it's in the design phase. 
Yes. Anyway, I can't think of a better way to uh, to view a collapsing planet than through the glass bottom floor of the new Hindenburg. <clears throat> Many versions of this final story coming from the shithole state of Oregon, which is pretty much just completely cloaked in smoke. So this mountain lion apparently trying to get away from the fire, wildfire smoke, probably has something to do with this story, I'm just guessing here. Woman who found mountain lion in her home says she used telepathy and loving gaze to get it out. A woman in Oregon said she used telepathy, a loving gaze, and a high frequency, among other tactics, to get a mountain lion to leave her home after finding it in her living room. Yes. So Lauren Taylor uh, said by loving her to peace. She was able to get the animal to leave the, her home safely. Uh, quote, I am not suggesting anyone seek out interactions with mountain lions. That's good to know. Cats are extremely psychic and perceptive of energy and this lion could have been dangerous in an energy field of fear or anger. There you go, little dog. So if we ever need to get a mountain lion out of our house, we are not going to get an, use an energy field of fear or anger to get a mountain lion off the living room couch. But anyway, I'm going to wrap up this uh, rant right about here. And we're going to come back for part two of today's mainstream uh, media Doomer headline roundup. And we're going to move over to the shithole continents of Europe and Asia in part two. Coming right up. Bye, guys. Well, you're going to stay. We got another whole rant to do.